Hello. In this video, we will be talking about ideal and real gases and then using the ideal gas law to solve problems using four different variables in a gaseous setting. So an ideal gas follows all gas laws perfectly at any pressure and any temperature. Uh, and we'll see in just a couple of minutes how real gases vary from this. But in ideal gas, we could apply Charles, Boyle's, the pressure temperature law, or the combined gas law, and it should work at all pressures and temperatures. Uh, secondly, ideal gases conform perfectly to kinetic theory. Uh, most importantly, the assumptions that particles have no volume. So gaseous particles take up no space or volume in their setting or container, and there are no attractions between the molecules. So gas particles will not be repelled by each other or attracted to each other. Uh, these are not exactly the ways that a gas works in the real world, though it, th it's close enough and describes enough of a temperature pressure range that we frequently use the idea of an ideal gas to solve problems. A real gas, um, the particles do have volume. Um, and there are attractions that exist between the particles. They can be attracted or repelled by one another, um, and this causes us a little bit of trouble um, under particular circumstances, which we will discuss momentarily. Um, real gases uh, differ the most from ideal gases at low temperatures. Remember, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a system. So, if the temperature is very low, the particles, the gaseous particles, are moving at a relatively slow speed. At these slower speeds, there are more opportunities for intermolecular forces to have an effect on the path and trajectory um, and interactions of the particles. So, if you think about gas particles moving super, super fast at a high temperature, they are not going to be near each other long enough to actually have an effect from an intermolecular force. When they're moving slowly, there will be an opportunity for those intermolecular forces to affect one another. Secondly, high pressures. Under high pressure, the particles will get very, very close together, usually, and they'll collide with each other more often. So, uh, under these higher pressures, the volumes of the particles come into play, and so do, again, the intermolecular forces. Um, if you think about taking gas and compressing it way, way down so that the pressure is very, very high, there is some point where we can't compress it anymore because the particles, the actual um, particles of gas, cannot compress themselves. When we talk about the compressibility of a gas, it is the space in between the particles that we are talking about. So moving forward, we're going to assume that gases are ideal, but we need to understand that at low temperatures and at high pressures, gases will not always behave like ideal gases. The ideal gas law now takes into account all four gas variables. We need to consider pressure, temperature, volume, and amount of gas. Uh, for pressure, we can use any of the three different types of pressure measurements that we've talked about, kilopascals, atmospheres, or millimeters of mercury. Temperature, we must use Kelvin. <clears throat> Whenever dealing with the gas laws, we need to use Kelvin as our unit for temperature. Volume should be in liters, um, especially for the ideal gas law, and we'll talk about that when we get to actually going through the calculations in a moment. <clears throat> and amount of gas needs to be in moles. Now, we might be given amount of gas as particles, um, grams, something like that, and then we would need to convert to moles. So the ideal gas law states that when pressure, volume, and temperature of a contained gas are known, the ideal gas law can be used to determine the number of moles of gas. Uh, and really, if any of those four items are unknown and we know the other three, we can use the ideal gas law to determine that fourth unknown variable. 
this mathematically equals uh, or looks like PV equals NRT. P is pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, R is the ideal gas constant, and T is temperature. So the ideal gas constant can rep be represented a number of different ways. As I said earlier, pressure can be represented with three different units. R is different for each of those units, and I will give these to you here. It's important to pay attention to the units. So R equals 8.31, and the units here are liters times kilopascals over Kelvin times moles. And this is a little bit of a, a clunky unit, but this should be written in with R. And you can see that the pressure being considered here is kilopascal. So if your problem calls for kilopascals, we will use 8.31. 0 0.0821 is for atmospheres, and 62.4 is for millimeters of mercury. Now, R can be uh, determined by going through um, a series of calculations. If you use PV equals NRT and put in information for standard temperature and pressure, you are able to derive R for um, any different pressure unit, which is very convenient. It's also important to note that Kelvin and moles should be constant throughout, but we will run into circumstances where liters are not the unit of volume um, that's given to us. I would recommend converting to liters and then using one of these ideal gas constants. Here's a sample problem. If you'd like to, pause the video, try this on your own, and then join in again. A 35.0 grams uh, sample of methane exerts a pressure of 85.6 kilopascals at a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. What is the volume of the methane sample? So we're given amount of gas, 35.0 grams. The pressure is given to us in kilopascals. The temperature is given to us in Celsius, and it is asking for the volume. So we are given three out of the four variables, and we need to solve for the last variable. We will use PV equals NRT to solve for volume. So we go back and look at this problem, and N represents amount of gas, specifically a number of moles. So we need to take 35.0 grams, and we will divide by the molar mass of methane, which we will list as 16.05, and that yields 2.18 moles of CH4. And I'm just going to move that over so we have 2.18 moles of CH4 and pressure is the next variable that we're looking for. You can see that this is simply given in the problem as 85.6 kilopascals. No conversions necessary. Temperature is the next piece of information given and it tells us that it is 32 degrees Celsius. We know that temperature must be uh, represented in Kelvin, so we will add 273 to this value for Celsius and reach 305 Kelvin. We'll scoot that over, and we are trying to solve for volume. Volume is what the question is asking us to solve, um, the volume of the methane sample. So we now need R. And if you think back to your, you look back to your notes a couple of slides ago, the R value for a system that pressure is being measured in kilopascals is 8.31 liters times kPa over moles times Kelvin. So now we have our five pieces of information. And those five pieces of information can be plugged into PV equals NRT. So we just pull them down. We take N and put it in immediately after the equal sign. P goes at the very beginning of the equation, followed by V, as that's what we're going to solve. And then on the right-hand side, we insert the gas constant and 305 Kelvin. Uh, I left off units for R just to try and make this step a, a little more um, clear instead of putting those clunky, clunky units in. But you can make sure that the units line up here and cancel out appropriately to solve for volume as a way to double check your work. And volume equals 64.5 liters when we solve for this system. A couple of helpful hints. You need to pay attention to units, especially for R. 
Uh, there are three different R's that I've given you, and you need to consider the context of the system and the unit that you've recorded pressure. Use Kelvin for temperature, always, during gas laws. We must use Kelvin. And consider that the amount of gas could be represented by grams, moles, or representative particles. So if you're solving for N, you might need to go a step further. We might ask how many molecules of CH4 were present um, if you are solving for N. So you might need to do some molar conversions either before or after the ideal gas law. For further practice problems, check the comments and thank you.